My house doesn't have a basement, and a lot of houses that don't have basements have crawl spaces instead, which are basically a layer of space under the lower level of a house with a height of no more than about 5 feet, usually used for storage. It started on a night like any other. I had classes the next morning, so I had to be in bed early. My room is on the first floor, and the crawl space is right below my room. After turning off the TV at like 11, I started hearing noises below me. Actually, it sounded like it was coming from right under my bed. My parents and brother were all asleep by now, so calling for any of their attention would be a little obnoxious at this point. I took a little courage, but I got on the carpet on my knees and looked under the bed, hoping I wouldn't see a rodent or any other kind of creature. There was nothing, though, so I got back into bed. As I got back into bed, though, the sound started up again. It was kind of a rough push-and-pull kind of sound. It sounded like something being done deliberately. I once again got on my knees on the side of the bed and looked underneath. There was definitely nothing under there, though. Oddly enough, every time I got out of bed, the sound stopped. I went to get my dad, and he took a look under the bed, too. Figures there were no sounds now, though. He told me he'd check the crawl space the next day to see if one of the pipes were leaking or something. I didn't even think of it being something in the crawl space. The rest of that night it was quiet, so I fell asleep with ease. When I got home from class the next day, I spotted something sticking out from under my bed. I pulled it out, and it was a bag full of old papers from like elementary school. I planned on asking my mom why she would put that in my room, but I figured I'd just throw it back down in the crawl space and forget about it. Our crawl space has its entry door inside of our garage my dad tends to leave the garage door open a lot during the summer months. This was so he could work in there without having the lights on while also getting some fresh air. Sometime in the middle of the night, I woke up to sounds coming from below my room. Not my bed this time, but for some reason the sounds were especially clear this night. I knew now something had to be in the crawl space. After turning on my bedside lamp, I ran to get my dad out from bed, who was a bit irritated that I'd woken him up. He led me down to the garage and to the crawl space door. He opened the door and grabbed the flashlight that hung next to the door. As we looked inside of the crawl space, however, we noticed something strange. Light. Across the other side of the area. Light was seeping in from above. But that made no sense. There weren't supposed to be any holes in the floor. My dad crouch walked his way to the hole. And then he screamed. <coughs> Hearing my dad scream with such fear and horror was the most disturbing thing I'd ever witnessed. I didn't know what he saw, but he screamed at me to open the garage door and get out of the house. I listened without asking questions. I stood in the driveway waiting. I heard a commotion inside of the house, including a scream from my mom. Five minutes later, my dad and older brother came outside, holding a stranger in their grips. Five minutes later, a police car pulled up to the house, and neighbors soon started coming outside to see what the commotion was. Let me explain what happened. When my father got to that hole in the ceiling of the crawl space, he realized it was a giant hole cut open right under my bed, and as he looked through it, he saw a masked man looking down at him. As my dad grabbed at the man's arms through the hole, he screamed for my older brother's help, who luckily came to my dad's aid. Without him, my dad could have easily been killed because that man was carrying a handgun. When I was 21, still living in my parents' house, my bedroom was actually supposed to be considered an extra room. It wasn't built with the intention of being a bedroom, more so a kind of downstairs storage room. However, I was the youngest, so I got the worst room. My two older brothers had already moved out by this point, and I was finishing up with college. It was winter break, however. My dad was on a business trip, and my mom was in another state with friends. They're the kind of parents who you never see around, and they've been like that since we were kids. My room happens to attach to the crawl space of our house. There's a little pull-off door in the wall. When I was little, my brothers always teased me and said there were aliens or monsters in the crawl space. Sometimes as a kid, I'd get scared by the littlest of noises coming from inside the wall next to my bed. Eventually, I outgrew that fear, obviously. I was chilling in my room, just trying to finish up all the work for my classes, when I heard some muffled noise coming from the crawl space. 
like literally be on the wall right next to my bed. It wasn't any kind of thumping or tapping or anything. It just sounded like some kind of sound that would come from a person's mouth. Of course, my heart started racing as I started freaking out over it. Given that I was home alone, I couldn't just call for my huge, intimidating dad to go in there. So, I opened the door to the crawl space, and with my phone's flashlight, just aimed it in every direction in the crawl space while still standing by the doorway. I wasn't sure exactly what I was looking for, but after not being able to see anything or anyone from the doorway, I contemplated going deeper into the crawl space. But just then, there was a voice. What, by making fans there? Hey, sometimes I talk too much, but let me tell you something right now. After nearly having a heart attack, I realized it was just one of those old talking Bubba toys. I didn't know what could have caused it to go off and start speaking though. I was guessing it was deep in some old bag of toys somewhere, and something was putting pressure on the trigger button. I waited by the door for the talking to stop, and when it finally did, I shut the attic door again and got back in my bed. When the time came for me to go to sleep, I turned off my laptop and the light and rolled on my side. It wasn't long after that that I heard the talking Bubba go off again inside the crawl space. Now that I knew what the sound was, it seemed much clearer. This was the last straw now. I had to get that toy out from whatever bag it was sitting in, or it would probably be going off all night. I went back to the crawl space door, and this time actually went inside. I followed the sounds of the toy's voice, and as I got to the big brown paper bag that seemed to be containing it, I saw two arms come out from the dark. Two arms that were stretched out forward, and there was a horrifying, deep scream that accompanied them. I was being lunged at. I screamed as I ran to the crawl space door and slammed it shut. It had a lock on it, thank god. A couple seconds after locking the door, there were bangs on the door that consistently came about every two seconds. The door didn't show any signs of giving, but I didn't stick around to find out if it would. I was upstairs already on the phone with the police. But I did notice the banging stopped downstairs. The police told me to wait either inside a locked room or outside in a safe place like a car or a neighbor's house. I didn't want to be in the house anymore until the cops arrived, so I took the spare keys to my car from the key ring and went to sit in my car. I had a view of the back section of my house from the street, however, and noticed a door on the side of our house was open. It was the outside crawl space door. It was completely wide open suddenly makes sense how there could be someone in there. The outside door must have been left unlocked by my dad by mistake. I sat in my car telling 911 to hurry up before the intruder could escape. I didn't see anyone leave through the door, but for all I knew they already had left. The cop car finally came roaring down the road with its lights on and stopped in front of my house. I got out of the car and called at him to follow me to the door. I pointed and said in there and he went inside with his flashlight. I peeked my head in there the whole time, helping out with the flashlight too. I made sure he didn't miss anything. I even suggested that he search any big boxes or bags. And he did. The officer was surprisingly patient and polite towards my demands given the situation. He came out after a few minutes of searching and assured me the crawlspace was empty. Whoever was in there left in a hurry. The crawlspace door could only be locked with a key or from the inside, so I asked the officer to wait there while I went inside and locked the door from the inside. As I was in the crawl space again, alone, I couldn't help but shake the feeling that I was being watched as I hurried back to my room to lock that door as well. The officer left a few minutes after, and I tried to get to sleep, but I couldn't. I was awake all night until the sun came up, just worrying about someone still being in that crawl space. Luckily no one ever broke into it again, but I guess I wouldn't call it breaking in since the door was unlocked. It was 2016. I had just signed a lease to move into my first house alone. It was a fixer-upper starter home for sure, but the neighborhood wasn't bad at all really. By the first day I had the house layout memorized, and by the third day I was settled in. However, by the fourth day, I started to hear some weird house noises. There was a small upstairs where the two bedrooms and a bathroom were. The first floor was just the living room, dining room, and kitchen. When I was upstairs, I never heard the sounds. However, when I was downstairs, I'd start to hear noises come from below the floor at later hours of the night. 
There was a small basement, technically, but it was just one little room meant to serve as a laundry room. I went down there to see if the noise could be coming from down there. There was no one down there in that room, but I could still hear noises coming from inside the wall. I felt around the wall to see if there was any kind of hollowness, and in fact there was. That meant there was some kind of room on the other side. I looked to the corner of the basement, where there was a small opening that went deeper than the rest of the room. I went over to look at it, at what I assumed to be just a tight space that could be used for storage, and learned there was actually a door in that tiny opening, a door that seemed to lead to some kind of crawl space area. I opened the door, which just barely cleared the tiny opening, and looked inside, but it was way too dark to go in there, plus whatever the noise was seemed to stop. I could tell just based off the very front of the space, however, that the ceiling was just tall enough to walk under, maybe with a slight crouch in your step. There was no way I was looking around there at night anyway, so I shut that door, went upstairs, and locked the basement door just in case, you know. I called it a night shortly after. The next few days, things were normal. One night, I heard a sound or two when I was in the basement doing laundry, but I was starting to think it was just some kind of noises that had to do with the boiler system or whatever. The next night, however, while I was in the living room, I heard thumps hitting the floor. Three distinct thumps, actually. Now my adrenaline was rushing, as I was positive I had someone in my house. I went into defense mode and grabbed the biggest kitchen knife I had and stormed downstairs. I tried to make myself angry as I approached the crawlspace door. I turned on my flashlight, opened the door, and started screaming with anger, or what I wanted to seem like anger. But really, I was shaking in my own skin as I entered that dark, cold crawl space. It was completely empty except for what seemed to be two empty boxes. I must have done a complete 360, analyzing the space at least five times, and I knew for a fact there wasn't anything or anyone in there. Then, however, something broke the absolute silence. It was a sound that was coming from no further than like 20 feet away from me. It was the sound of breathing. In a panic, I looked in the direction of the breathing, and was horrified to see something standing in the corner of the space. I didn't know what to think, but I knew it couldn't be a real person, because I'd looked around at least five times and saw nobody in there just a second ago. As I stood there, frozen, I started to feel like the figure in the corner was getting closer to me. That's when I ran for the crawlspace door. When I made it outside, I looked around for something to block the door with, but found nothing and so I ran upstairs and locked the door. That night I went to sleep at my parents' house, and the next day I harassed the landlord to let me out of the lease given what I had just experienced. It took a lot of arguing, but I managed to get out of that house within the same week. All that week, however, I stayed out from the basement, but I did continue to hear noises from down below when I was in the living room 